Hello and welcome to Psalm Day. My name is Evan. I'm one of the ministers at St. Mary's Anglican Church. And today for Psalm Day, we're looking at Psalm 115. Yes, we are closing down on 119, but don't be afraid because we're going to spend an entire week in Psalm 119. So get very excited for that Psalm 119 week. That's going to be wonderful. But for now, Psalm 115. If you haven't read the psalm yet, uh, let me encourage you to do so before continuing with the video. Um, And I really do love this psalm. I really, really do. It is very fun. Um, But it's also one which, uh, you know, which is a a rallying cry. It's a, um, you know, uh, well, you'll see as we go through. Now, for what this psalm feels like to me is, you know, when you're at the football, um, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't really know about uh, NFL. I'm quite sure AFL do. Um, but certainly at, um, at, at, at soccer or AFL match, sorry, A-League matches, there are chants that you sing that support your team and bolster up your team. But then there are chants that bag out the other team. And there's usually quite a few expletives involved. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot of fun because it's all it's all in banter. Um, but and this psalm is like one of those. It's like we are we are cheering for the god for the god squad for God's team, and we're bagging out everybody else. Um, but it's not done in jest. It's done actually pointing out what these things are. Um, that is idols. And so, so as we go through, we start with this brilliant line, verse 1, Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory, because of your love and faithfulness. And if any, if there ever was a catch cry, which I would want for my life, it is that. You know, um, and, you know, Trent, you know, recently has been talking about... Um, um, the monotaphs and uh, inscriptions on tombstones and that sort of thing. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Holy dooly, wouldn't that be a wonderful message to have? And then starts the the kind of the barrack. Uh, Why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven uh, and he does whatever pleases him. And then here's, you know, here's the, the great bit. Um, well, the funny bit, you know, but their idols are made of silver and gold. They're made by the hands of men. They have mouths that cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but they cannot walk. Nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who made them will be like them, and uh, so will all who trust in them. All right, like you know, <laughs> what a <laughs> what an awesome couple of lines uh, to kind of you know to yell at the opposition. Um, but it is, it's true. For people who put their stock and faith in things that are not real and not living like the living God, they will be like them. Lifeless, worldly, empty. And so, you know, the psalmist, I guess, points points at the um, the contemporary idols. You know, he looks at those who worship Baal, those who worship Asherah, to think... Um, and if you think about the Gentiles, um, those who worship um, uh, the Egyptian gods, uh, and thinking a little bit later, those who worship the Greek gods, um, and you know, and they have physical manif- manifestations, you know, within you know images of people or um, you know people with different sort of uh, animal parts or whatever. But let's think about uh, contemporary idols. What do we worship? A mortgage, um, the paycheck. Family, acceptance, popularity, uh, image, yeah, self-image, uh, all of those sort of things. When we worship those, hey buddy, when we worship those, we become like them. And I'm not mean like like the uh, the good things about them. We become like the world, empty, um, sinful, without meaning, without purpose. And, uh, well, godless. 
when we put our stock in nothing, what's the return investment? Nothing. It's like we, you know, if our if our belief is our, if our um, our love was you know was money, you'd be you wouldn't be you know putting your money in a bank account. You'd be putting it in, I don't know. You just you'd be giving it away. You'd be throwing it out in the street. That's what it's like to worship idols. That's what it's like to worship anything other than God. We are wasting our lives. And we are walking, striding forward and forward towards nothingness. Absolute nothingness. We are, to quote Paul in Ephesians 2, we are dead in our sins. And we belong to the kingdom of the ruler of the air. Ruler of nothing. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. Hmm. Big words, huh? Let's continue. And then we hear the rallying cry of, I guess, God's team. The house of Israel, the house of Aaron, those who fear him. The Lord is his help and shield. The Lord is your help and shield if you trust in him. What does it mean to trust in him? Well, instead of spending our time and money looking for those other things, right? Thinking all the time about the paycheck, thinking all the time about the family, thinking all about the uh, acceptance. Those things in of themselves are good things, but when they consume us, when we worship them, when we spend every ounce of our living trying to fulfill that, that's idolatry. But when we put all that energy towards God and trust that God takes care of all those of all those things, or that living for God will change how we view those things, that's that's fearing the Lord, that is trusting the Lord. That is when He is our help and shield. Uh, verses 12 and 13, uh, there's reciprocal blessing. When those houses trust in the Lord, the Lord comes back with blessings for his people. Um, but of course, uh, we know that uh, they were already blessed by the Lord coming to them first. And we, the Lord has come to us first through Jesus Christ. And so we've already been blessed. When we take up that blessing and when we trust in the Lord, we are blessed again. And then verses 16 through 18, uh, the, psalm, the psalm caps off, The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to man. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down into silence. It is we who extol the Lord both now and forevermore. And this is a very interesting little line here, verse 17 and 18. Um, the people who praise the Lord praise him forevermore, but there are people who die. Now, I'm... I'm not going to jump to conclusions as to what the psalmist is saying. But he seems to think that people who die don't go on praising the Lord. So what uh, and so connecting that with what Jesus has done for us, that makes sense for me and it makes sense for us because uh, we who have Jesus as our Lord, that we have put our or have given our sin over to Jesus, who trust in the Lord and He is our help and our shield, we are promised eternal life with Him, and we don't suffer what Revelation calls the second death. But those who are judged for their sins, those who think they can go on their own, who think they don't need God, are judged and they do die, and they cannot praise the Lord. Ultimately, that is the end of those who worship idols, isn't it? Death. See, we only have this one chance. We only have this one chance to pick sides. To kind of analogize this, um, there are different ways. I'm not sure about NRL or AFL. I'm, I'm sure it might be quite similar. But for football across the world, um, there are a couple different ways that you can end up supporting a team. Um, you, the first one is you can be born into supporting a team. You can be born into a family that supports a team. Um, even then, you might go on to pick another one. Um, you can choose to pick a team if you're not born into one. I chose to pick. I chose to support a German team, um, but then I was adopted into a family that um, 
that follows another team, um, Liverpool, um, by my father-in-law, uh, Maddie's dad. Um, and so we only have this life to go through and pick a side, you know, in pick a side of this. Um, are we on the side that glorifies God and looks to God as our help and shield, or are we on the side of idolatry? Because come full time, verse 17 and 18 is waiting for everybody. And which side are we going to land? Which side are our loved ones and our friends going to land? The burden is on us to take the gospel to them, to pray for them, to pray that they would hear and they would turn. And so let us sing the name of our God. Let us sing the songs of our team and barrack for the God who loves us. I'm so thankful that the God that I worship doesn't lead me into nothingness. Please, please, please join me in having a heart for those who worship nothingness. Who are you going to share the gospel with this week? Who are you going to invite to church? Don't let opportunities go by. It's the full-time whistle is coming. Sorry for the sports analogies. Grace and peace to you.